So good evening. Good Certainly good to see you in the Lord's house tonight. It's good to be here, isn't it? And uh, praise the Lord for it. We're just uh, excited about what the Lord has for us. And uh, I want to, something on my heart, real uh, uh, anxious about this, excited about, I should say. Uh, and I want to want to bring that forth first, give a good report about uh, the Gideon banquet, which uh, uh, due to COVID, hadn't been able to to have the banquet for, uh, let's see, 20, two years. I mean, we, I believe we missed two years. And uh, last night, the preacher Chris and myself had to prove they're going. And to me, it was one of the best ones we'd, we'd ever attended. And it just, uh, just tremendous. We had uh, just uh, had, they always have a testimony. Someone had gotten saved through the Gideon ministry by uh, receiving a, a, a Bible, and, uh, the, and the man that gave that testimony went on to be his pastor to church, I believe, for 16 years, and uh, he got saved when he was about uh, uh, 27, maybe, years old, and, uh, but he shared, and it was, it was a powerful testimony, and then, our, then we always have a speaker from the Gideons that gives a challenge, and presents uh, a challenge about the Gideon work and, and some examples and other things. Uh, but he told one thing, and I'll just uh, mention a little. I can't tell it with the, the force that he told it in the setting there, but he told about Brother Earl Alexander. And I guess I'd heard that several years ago and forgotten it, but uh, what had happened, he, uh, several years ago, there's a lady, her, her run her car, had a car accident. She run a car in his house, uh, broke through the house. And uh, so when that happened, uh, Brother Earl had, uh, of course, had called the ambulance and he told her, said, the ambulance is coming to get you, you know. And, uh, but he asked her about salvation and, and won her to the Lord right there. She got saved. Uh, then he won her husband to the Lord and went to the emergency room and won the two kids to the Lord. The whole family uh, got saved. Uh, through that experience, and the, but the Gideon speaker, he after the service, I'd spoken to him, and and he said that uh, he said that testimony has run around the world. He's talking about being in the Philippines and just different places he himself had traveled and shared that, <laughs> and uh, how God had used that, and using it now still yet. But it uh, was exciting to hear 
and be in the service with uh, the Gideons and, uh, of course, we enjoyed a good meal. And they had a big, they weren't skimpy on nothing. They had uh, a big dessert. It wasn't a little, you know, sometimes you get a little piece of cake or a little piece of pie. But, boy, ever who made that cake and cut it, they've just, they must have liked cake themselves. That's all I could figure. It's a huge piece. I could hardly eat all mine. But I made it. <laughs> Took an extra glass of tea just to wash that cake down. But it, we had a wonderful time. The Spirit of God moved, didn't it, preacher? Just from just start to finish, God was there. And that's what made all the difference. So we praise the Lord. We have a Gideon speaker, the Lord willing, uh, sometime in October, I think. And uh, we look forward to that. We're in the, in, we're in the book of James tonight, uh, chapter 4, and then we're in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 23. And I believe Jeremiah 23, 23 is one of our memory verses, and I won't read that verse, but we'll take prayer requests tonight and uh, trust the Lord to help us. Uh, my message tonight, the thought on my heart is draw nigh. And this verse is just a, it's, it's a favorite verse. It's a very familiar verse. Uh, we've, I've, heard, I've quoted it many times myself. Draw nine to God, he'll draw nine to you. And uh, I've heard it mentioned about, you know, a lot of times. And it got on my heart about drawing nine to God. And the Lord began to speak to me, I believe, about some things involved. And we see it just in the text in these verses. And, and the question in my mind got to asking, we said draw nine to God. And so it just come to me, well, how, do, how can we do that? And what are some Necessary things we might say need to be in place to draw nigh unto God. So I believe we see it in these verses, and I trust the Lord will help us with it. Uh, maybe prayer requests, something to mention for prayer. A lot of things to pray about for sure. Maybe something to be mentioned tonight, and we'll pray about it. We certainly appreciate your prayers for our family, and uh, the Lord surely is helping us. I mentioned my aunt, and I've mentioned her several times. I just appreciate you praying for her. And uh, she's had a good day today. And uh, I praise the Lord for that. If something else to mention, we'll pray. Brother Ronald, how about praying for us tonight? Appreciate the prayer. Let's give, look at verse, uh, Jeremiah 23, 23. And the Bible says there, Am I God at hand, saith the Lord, and not a God afar off? And then our verse in the book of James is chapter 4 and verse 8. And it said, Draw nigh unto God, and he'll draw nigh unto you. And cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Our Heavenly Father, again, in Jesus' name, thank you for salvation. Thank you for saving me. And Lord, I pray in the message, the word of God tonight will go forth and with understanding. And uh, that, to give, that you, you would help me. That be able to give the sense and the meaning thereof. And, and the Holy Spirit would just touch us in a special way. We thank you last night. I've already mentioned what a blessing and just a reviving, refreshing service that uh, to hear testimonies and the challenge and, and, the, and the things of God, the work of God going on. I pray you'd help tonight in the message and in our service. Thank you for each one. Lord, we pray for needs and a lot of needs that uh, we've thought about, prayed about even this day and a lot of things ongoing to be prayed about. And Lord, we pray you'd help us and we want to thank you for that you are God at hand and not a God afar off. Help us, help me to draw nigh unto God and then uh, believe the promise, claim the promise that you will indeed draw nigh unto us. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. I'll look at my first little thoughts about, I'm thinking about uh, the, uh, in our, her, her message and her thoughts tonight about uh, three, three over, over uh, kind of an overview of uh, what's on my heart about drawing nigh unto God. And I thought about when I got here in the parking lot, got out of the car, I thought about, and I'll try to think tonight, I believe in this text in our chapter four that we see some things that, uh, that he talks about, about drawing nigh unto God. But I thought about uh, the book of Romans chapter 12, 
Verse 1 where it said, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercy of God, you present your body a living sacrifice. And I remember a lot of years ago hearing a preacher, and uh, he had mentioned about some after service, he preached that. Somebody came up to him asked him, said, how do you do that? And uh, so he'd give them an answer uh, in his thinking about uh, how do you present your body a living sacrifice. So we're thinking about drawing nine to God. In these verses tonight, I was thinking about several times in the scripture, it talks about uh, 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 God being near, drawing nigh. And in the book of Psalm, chapter 34 and verse 18, give me that verse you will. It's talking about God is near. The Lord is nigh them that are of a broken heart and save us such that be of a contrite spirit. Now in our verses, we see some of those things in, in line with that line of thinking uh, that God is nigh them of a broken heart and a contrite spirit. And of course, contrite spirit is a repentant spirit. It's a humble spirit. And uh, we, we see that uh, examples in the Bible of that uh, drawing nigh to God. And I got to thinking about the, the, the distance. distance. Uh, you know, before the fall, uh, Adam and Eve, there was no distance between them and God. In fact, the Bible talks about that. We talk about that and get excited about that, the fellowship. And my message in drawing nigh to God, He drawing nigh to you, it has to do, I believe, with the Christian, with the fellowship. And I want to thank God tonight. I just praise the Lord tonight. From the Scriptures, we can, we can believe that and base our belief on that. We believe through salvation is a gift of God. I, I was listening at the message coming up, or, or our Sunday service, and here in Children's Church, <laughs> And Brian telling it's a gift and the thief on the cross and how he got to heaven and when nothing, you know, he didn't know nothing about good works and didn't even know nothing about membership of the church. That Brian said that in our children's church and it was true. But uh, he was saved by grace like every person is saved by grace. And so the salvation comes, you know, we had in our Sunday school lesson from the book of James about works and justification and so forth. And Brian said the thief on the cross never even heard about justification. He didn't, I bet he didn't even know that word. Maybe never heard it in all of his life. But, uh, he, it, but the exciting thing about me, the thief on the cross, Jesus said today shall I be, be of me in paradise. And I'm rejoicing tonight that this very night, uh, on Wednesday night, if this is the, what is it, September the 21st, 2022, that the thief on the cross is still enjoying paradise tonight. <laughs> I believe that, don't you? And we'll see him one day by grace. So salvation tonight is, is the gift of God. I'm glad I'm saved. But then as Christians, there's a whole lot of this scripture here and a whole lot of the Bible written to us that are saved. And so the, the, the drawing nigh and the distance is uh, involving our fellowship. But before the fall, there was no distance between God and man. And Adam and Eve walking in perfect fellowship with God in the cool of the day. You know, wouldn't that be an exciting time? Uh, you know, I was thinking about in the cool of the day, Many years ago, things has changed in my life of how we do things now. But many years ago, we used to, neighbors would come, you know, and we'd sit out in the yard. And, uh, you know, in the cool of the evening and talk, you know, and just sit there and talk. And I don't know, I don't know how we survived the bugs back then. But I can't get out uh, just, you know, after it gets a certain time. If I'm outside, I've said, I've got to get in they're eating me up. And <laughs> they are. You just, they start whelking up. I go down sometime in the basement and just rub myself in alcohol, you know, trying to get them to quit itching and burning and all. But we'd, in the cool of the day, we enjoyed fellowship with neighbors. And it was just a, it was a tradition for us. I can see now sitting out there. But Adam and Eve, there's no distance between them and them. But after the fall, sin, sin brought in a distance. But God, I'm glad God, you know, aren't you glad that God designed a plan where he could be righteous still, be just and justify those that are guilty. I was going to use it, and uh, Timothy, if you back there, give it to me, uh, the last verse in that Calvary, and I'll just look at that. Praise God, we sing that and rejoice at Calvary, oh, the love that drew salvation's plan, and oh, the grace that brought it down to man, and oh, the mighty, mighty guffs that God did span, at Calvary. Thank God that distance that was between you and I and we were lost and apart from God 
In fact, the Bible in the book of Ephesians chapter 2, and I'm already feeling good about this sermon. This, this could be a Sunday morning sermon, perhaps. I don't know if it keeps going this good. I may just preach it again, praise God. But in the book of Ephesians chapter 2, it describes a lost condition as being afar off. But it said, thank God we've been made nigh. I like that word nigh, don't you? And that word nigh, I looked it up in the dictionary, praise God, it means to be close in, in, in relationship, an intimate relationship, and uh, uh, close in distance. You know, we're right there. We're, we're, it, it closes and, and eliminates the distance. But thank God we're, we've been made nigh. But the book of Ephesians tells us how we were made nigh. It said, by the blood of Christ, His blood. It bridged the gap, thank God. It spanned it. God, at Calvary, He took care of all of it, the distance that was there. And he, and he brought us in fellowship and reconciled us unto Himself, thank God. But the distance, the distance in the life of a Christian, and you know, the distance, I remember growing up, and you know, I've, it's, it's kind of, uh, well, it's a blessing to me. Some of the things that I heard preachers preach growing up as a young person, even as a kid, I didn't think too much about it then, but since I've thought about a lot of things. I've thought about things that my pastor told me and, and I've heard other preachers say that just was many years ago. I remember in our church we had a preacher and he, this is one of his uh, more used sayings and uh, he, he would say a lot of times, he'd say, are you walking a guilty distance? And you know, there, there's, there's, there's a distance you know, we, we've, the fellowship is broken. It becomes a distance. But the distance, and we have an example in the book of Luke chapter 15. The distance, whenever we get a distance between us and God and the fellowship broken, the distance is not measured in miles, but it's rather measured in morals. That's where the distance comes in. And we see a good example of that uh, in the prodigal son and his brother. The prodigal son, the Bible said, went into the far country. And uh, I believe that he, the far country, we, I don't know exactly. Somebody might research that and you could ask uh, your phones and your computers and your laptop and your table and tablet and everything else and get an answer to that. You may know the distance that he actually traveled. But it said the far country. And we know miles wise, he was a pretty good ways off from the fellowship of the father. But the distance wasn't a factor because there his elder brother was there and he was close by in, in the proximity. He was there at the home still yet, but he was, a, he was away from God too. And he was broken in the fellowship. And the problem with the prodigal was, was the rebellion. But the problem with the elder brother was the self-righteousness. See, you know, he said, you know, about what all his brother had done, how terrible it was, and so forth. And here he's, he was upset because his brother had come home. And his dad even went out and entreated him and said, we're rejoicing, we're making merry. You know, your brother, he was lost, now he's found. Praise God, he's home. I mean, we killed a fatty calf, we're just having a celebration. And he's outside puffing up and his lips all pooched out and uh, wouldn't come in. He was at a distance. But the problem is the moral distance is the problem. It ain't measured in miles. But we see, thank God, I'm glad we can draw nigh unto God, aren't you? And I will talk about that a little bit. I was thinking, yeah, how can we do that? In my next little outline is the Word in Jesus. You're in the book of John chapter 10. You know, it starts out there and it talks about Chapter 10 said, we don't need to say that we need to sin, bring God down from heaven. Uh, the Messiah has come down. Amen. From heaven. Did you know the two greatest things that we see, two of the greatest things, I might say, two of the greatest, there's so many great things, but two of the greatest things about Christianity tonight is, number one, the incarnation, that God was made flesh. And he came down from heaven. Book of John, chapter 1, verse 14, that the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Praise God. Two of the greatest things about Christianity is the incarnation. And then the second one is the resurrection. Praise God. He not only came down from heaven, but praise God, He came up from the grave. Hallelujah, Christ arose. 
But he says in the book of Romans chapter 10, he, Paul begins to talk and he talks about the word. He said, the word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. My memory verse that we had, God said, am I not a God at hand and not a God afar off? I'm glad, thank God, that the word of faith is accessible. It's near, it's close. And then Jesus, praise God, he's accessible, isn't it? He's near, he's close. And he said, the word of faith that we preach is now, thank God. It's close, it's near. It's, in, it's in, within reach, praise God. And he goes on, the word of faith that we preach, he said that if thou shalt confess, verse 9, that with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. This is the word of faith that we preach. And he said, it's now, thank God. I'm glad it is, aren't you? And then he goes on, said, with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture said, whosoever believeth is not ashamed. Amen. And I'm glad tonight that the same Lord, that the, that the Greek and the Jew, the same Lord over all is rich unto all, call upon his name. And whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be safe. That's the word of faith that we preach. And it is nigh. I remember Brother Earl in, in being with him on, on several occasions, he and I, and he, he used those verses a whole lot, and he's talking about the word of faith which we preach. He, he said, it's nigh to you. It's right here, amen. Uh, you can get a hold of it. You know, our children's church, praise God, it's the gift of God. I mean, the gift of God is available, and any, a person can receive it. And you say, why is that? Why do you believe that? And why do you know that? Because Jesus came to save sinners, and he came, the Bible said, the book of Luke 10, 19, to seek and save, which says is lost. You said, He's still doing that. Right today, this very day, I mean, he's seeking to save that which is lost. It's, he's accessible. Thank God he's nigh, amen. You can get a hold of him. And then I go on tonight and think, I want to look at my next little thoughts about in our verses tonight. We see three things that I want to notice. We see a word about his coming. And then we see a word about the cleansing and the word about the crying in these verses in our text tonight, the book of James chapter 4. And I believe these three things, and there's much more than I'm getting out of it, I can assure you of that. Uh, our opening Sunday was elected, connected, and protected. You remember Petey? And I told him a while ago, I'm going to preach that one of these days, and I ain't going to tell him where I got it. But I'll try to be honest and say I didn't wake up at 4 o'clock in the morning and think of it. But uh, I was here in Sunday school and heard it, amen. And it blessed my heart. Isn't that a blessed elected, connected, and protected? We see it all in the book of Ephesians chapter 4. I mean chapter 1, excuse me, right there it is. But that's good, ain't it? But a word about, his, about the coming. And number one, the word about the coming is in verse 8 where he said, draw nigh unto God. We, we can come. He said, I want you to draw nigh unto God. And by doing that, then he'll draw nigh unto you. In reading that verse, it seems to me, and you know, I want to thank God tonight that God himself takes the initiative, aren't you? We're talking about salvation. He comes and seeks and saves which that is lost. But you know, after we're saved, if I'm understanding it, He's got something for us. And he said, I want you to draw nigh. Now give me my outline. I, I, had, I had an outline on the front, my page, and then turned over on the back, and I just kept writing. Give me that little thought, if you want to, about the distance. Then we'll come back to this. The distance. Distance not measured in miles, but in morals. And then he said, a call to submit. You know, in the verse before that, he said, submit yourself unto God and resist the devil. He'll flee from you. And then there's a call to submit and there's a call to commit, which the commit is to draw nigh unto God. But the distance, my outline on the back, Timothy, is the distance. There's a lot of things can attribute and cause the distance. There's all kind of things that can contribute to the distance. As the preacher said in my growing up years, are you walking a guilty distance? There's a distance. And sometimes the distance may be wide. You know, sometimes I've almost thought that the distance got so wide to me, I was almost out of hearing range. <laughs> but God's got a way of uh, speaking. Somebody said, have you ever heard God speak in an audible voice? 
And somebody said, the Lord is a lot louder than that. <laughs> but when he gets right down in here, and it kind of echoes sometimes, don't it? He, he gets our attention. But the, but the distance can be caused. There's a lot of things can cause the distance. Sometimes it's just, you know, a Bible reading and prayer, the, the, the failure of that. And maybe it's unconfessed sins. And maybe it's the wrong books or tainted movies, you know. I got to thinking about that. You're in the book of Second Peter, and give me those verses, if you will, and we'll get, come back to this. Uh, Lot, and he delivered just Lot, and he was vexed with the conversation of the wicked down there in Sodom and Gomorrah. And look here, it says, for this righteous man, we wouldn't even think that Lot was righteous unless we had that verse, would we? But there, right there it says it. But he said he dwelt among them, and seeing and hearing, Vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. Did you know what we take in through the eye gate and the ear gate? Amen. Affects us. And you just can't put and through the eye gate and just let stuff, you know, filthy stuff in and through the ear gate and it not affect a person. It does. And sometimes that'll cause a distance. Sometimes, and here's another thing that'll cause the distance between a Christian and God is neglecting fellowship with God's people. Amen? Amen. I believe that. Did you know, preacher, if I'm understanding the scriptures at all, as Christians, we need each other. I just don't believe there's no Lone Ranger Christians. Even Lone Ranger had Tonto, you know. Uh, (laughs) And he had what old silver and bullet, and he had all that. Uh, but the fellowship of other Christians, you know, it's just a blessing. People, you know, God uses people sometimes, and not just sometimes, but many times, just the things that I needed to hear was just spoken to me by another Christian, that God was using them to. Maybe sometime in encouragement, maybe sometime in rebuke, maybe sometime in, in speaking to me about his will for me. I mean, getting the message through to me. Just the fellowship is just wonderful. So a neglect of that will cause a distance. <laughs> I've heard people argue with me all my ministry. And I'm talking about people that can do everything, go everywhere else but church. And they'd say, you know, I don't need it. Well, I want to testify to myself that I do need it. And you know, sometimes it gets so low. You ever heard that expression said, I'm so low, I, I, I don't know, if, if I looked, I'd be looking a snake in the eye. But I don't want to look no snake in the eye, I'm afraid of snake. And uh, <laughs> I put on some gloves. I, whenever I'm mowing or whatever, I wear gloves. Josiah, this is the funniest thing. You know, little Josiah, he gave me a, high five when he come in a while ago. <laughs> Timothy got a kick it. We both did. So Josiah gave me a high five and he gave me one high five and then he gave me another and he backed his hand up and he said, what's wrong with your hands? <laughs> <laughs> and I said, yours don't look like that, do the Josiah? He, he said, no, his wasn't broke. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I wear these little brown gloves. Y'all seen them ancient by dogs, yeah? So I left them out there in the gazebo. Some of them I have to pull them off, just leave them wherever I stop. That's what barely, that's one of her complaints to me, leaving things wherever I stop. In the house too. But anyway, I slipped them gloves off to mow the other day. And I felt something, you know, one of the fingers didn't hardly go all the way up. And I said, oh Lord. <laughs> Pulled my finger out and a little lizard come crawling out. Beverly said, you might all turn them things wrong side out. Might be a black widow in there next time. The lizard was all right, but neglecting our fellowship get, causes a distance. Then I won't, I won't look tonight. And I'm thinking about in our text tonight, chapter four, we're going back to our little outline. Is a word about his coming or about the coming. Come, come draw nigh, he says. And then he says a word about cleansing. In verse 8, he said, Bro, nigh to God, and he said, Cleanse your hands, 
you sinners, and purify, you, purify your hearts. Now, the cleansing of the hands symbolize the outward things about us. But the purifying of the heart concerns and symbolizes the things on the inside that only God sees. And he said, I want you, if you're going to draw nigh unto me, there's a problem that you're going to have to take care of. And I'm going to have to take care of it because the distance is there. But I'm wanting to draw nigh unto God. And in, in our verse tonight, he said, well, Roger, what you need to do is cleanse your hands. You need to purify your heart. That's where you need to start. We need to work on that. And it's going to work out. You're going to draw nigh, but we're going to take care of some things. And then we're going to draw nigh. You're going to, uh, praise God, we're going to shorten the distance, aren't we? We're going, we're going to close the gap, praise God. And we're going to get nigh. And then he goes on and says this in, in a verse on down. And he said, I want you to do this. He says in verse 9, to be afflicted and mourn. He gives us a word about crying. And he said, I want you to weep. And let your laughter be turned into mourning. Now that's not a that's not a, a rebuke about laughing. In fact, a merry heart doeth good like a medicine. <laughs> In the book of Ecclesiastes, I believe song, uh, that Solomon said there's a time for laughing, didn't he? There's a time for crying. You know, <laughs> I've looked in the mirror sometimes, wished I could, you know, my you know, my dad used to say this. If you got that, you know, that look on your face, you was all puckered up and crying. And Daddy used to say that. He said, you better watch it. It might freeze like that. <laughs> and you don't want the rest of your life to go around looking like that, do you? He used to tell me that when I was a kid. So this is not, this is not a rebuke against laughter and against joy at all. But what this is tonight, we're talking about getting nigh to God. And he said, in order to do that, there's going to be some mourning and some weeping over our sin and over the fact that we've, that there's been a distance caused. And the distance has been caused by me of some things that I failed in and some things that I've un- sinned that I've unconfessed and a lot of other things that I can't even think of, and maybe you could think of your own self, maybe something personal. You said, this is cause of distance. Sometimes the attitude. Sometimes just our mean, ill spirit. And you know, that comes out. You notice that comes out in the house. You know, sometimes the people you're the closest to, they can rub you wrong. And you can rub them wrong. And then you have to, you know, whenever the fellowship is broken, then God looks on that. We've broken our fellowship with him. And he said, I want you to take it dead serious. And there need to be some repentant crying if it need be. And you need to have a contrite spirit, a broken heart. And a contrite spirit, a repentant spirit. You know, that's illustrated David whenever you sin. And see if you can find that verse. Is it in Psalms 51? And I can't remember if I gave you that verse or not. It's Psalm 51, 17. And it said there that the sacrifices of God are a broken spirit. And look at this. A broken and a contrite heart. O oh God, thou will not despise. You say, what are you thinking and saying? I'm believing the word of God is telling us if we want to get nigh, there's going to have to be a brokenness. Whenever, we've, whenever the distance has been created in order to get back. You know, you think about salvation tonight. You know, God in his wisdom designed a plan where he could be holy and still save you and I that are lost. And as the liberals would think, and they said, oh, God's love. But God didn't look at mankind and said, you're sin, you sin. And you say you're sorry you sin. And I'm sorry you sin, but let's just forget it. God didn't do that. 
No, Jesus had to go to Calvary, praise God. And that guff that God uh, at Calvary was the, the, the great guff, thank God, that, that was there, the span that was there. Praise God, he, he brought us together through what he did on Calvary, and we've been brought now by the blood of Christ. Thank God, he made the remedy for us. And, he, and you know, some people's got the idea that somehow or another, you know, and I've heard that argued, said, oh, God, not going to allow anybody to go to hell. You know, in the, in the end, somehow or another, he'll just excuse everybody. God will never excuse the sin. But I want to thank God tonight. He's done everything that could be possibly done that people can have forgiveness of sins. Amen. I mean, he's did it all on Calvary. Thank God through his son Jesus and loved us and sent his son to die on Calvary for our sins. But the sacrifices that God's pleased with, thank God, is a brokenness. And that's what we see here in our crying. Draw nigh unto God. And he'll draw nigh unto you. And the preacher that preached to me when I was just a kid, and he said, are you walking a guilty distance? And I'm just a little kid there hearing that statement. It didn't mean nothing hardly to me then. But somehow or another, God stuck it back in my mind somewhere and just left it there. That's a blessing, isn't it? What is that they say? I reckon, do your brain cells die or something? But somebody said that that's what happens to our memory, that these brain cells that's dying, they forget to tell them new ones what all they know. <laughs> they just slip out. And <laughs> but God's good, ain't he? Give me the verse at Calvary. We sing that song, and what a blessing. And Brother Ronald, it'd be good, I believe, that i just like to sing that verse and Loretta, if you'll come to the piano and we're going to sing at least a couple of verses. We'll get the first one and the last one in on at Calvary. The love that drew salvation's plan and praise God the grace that brought it down to man and thank God tonight the mighty guff, the mighty guff that God did span at Calvary. And he brought me and he brought you that were far off. And the thing about it, the fact of it is Brian brought out in children's church, we was far off and there wasn't no way of getting back on our own. But thank God he bridged it for us at Calvary. Let's stand and sing that tonight. Amen. might mention this tonight and we're all familiar at least we in church and we know the story of the 
rich man in hell, don't we? But you know what Abraham told him? He said, there's a great gulf. There's a big gulf between you and us. And them that are there in paradise, they can't go to where you are. And you can't come to where we are. There's a guff fixed. But I'd say in my appeal tonight, and maybe somebody viewing the video, praise God that guff, that span, was taken care of at Calvary. And you can get that taken care of in this life, amen. And then you'll never experience that scene that we see there where the guff is fixed permanent and no remedy. I'm glad the remedy is available, aren't you? Calvary. I'm excited about Calvary. And we could take time enough to sing that last verse again, can't we? You say, I'm just going to sing for the preacher. He's just excited about, I'm glad that he, the span, thank God, at Calvary that he did for me and for you and for those, the whole world, in fact. Thank God tonight, His grace brought it down to a little boy on 268. And that was me. How many people? They said there's 8 billion people now. I don't know how many people it was when I was 9 years old, but there's a lot of people. But I'm glad God, through His grace, brought it down to me. Amen. That's a blessing, ain't it? Preacher, I'm almost thinking about cranking up and I'm getting the inspiration to preach. <laughs> How about praying for us, will you?